This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm happy, glad this Sunday morning to have another opportunity to come out and worship and praise and give God the glory and honor that he is more deserving of. Why don't you just give him a wave offering for right where you are? Thank you, Lord, for all the Thank many blessings you, that you've just, just bestowed upon us this past Thank week, you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for all the blessings and the new mercies that we're going to see this coming week, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we magnify you, Lord. Good morning to each of you. We welcome you to our worship service this morning here at Shallow Old Site as we celebrate on this third Sunday of the Advent season. Truly, God is worthy to be praised. We know that you are going to be blessed this morning with a fabulous and dynamic word from our anointed pastor, Reverend Dr. Aaron L. Dobon Sr., and you will be uplifted by the melodious tunes of our praise and worship team as they sing to the glory of God. Amen. We do have some announcements that we would like to share with you and bring to your attention this morning. Shallow Baptist Church Old Site will be the host church for Watch Night 2021. Mount Zion will provide the music and Shallow Baptist Church New Site will provide the preaching. The service will be held on Friday, December the 31st, 2021 from 11 p.m. to midnight. And at this moment, it will be in-person worship and we will be following all the CDC COVID guidelines and we will be having a max of 84 people in the service and we will practice social distancing. Amen? Amen. However, there's always a however. <laughs> however, if the COVID cases continue to rise as they have been here the past couple weeks due to the Omicron variant, uh, we will make other arrangements and we will have to change it to an online worship service at that time. Amen. So the only persons in the event that that does happen that will be present in person just will be the participants in the worship service program itself. But as of right now, we will be having the service in person, but stay tuned to see if there will be any changes. Amen? Amen. Amen. We ask that you please continue to keep those in our church family and your prayers that are dealing with the recent loss of a family member or a loved one. Um, often it is hard during the holiday season, especially when we have folks within our church family or our loved ones that pass away and go on to glory during the holiday season. So we ask you to keep them prayed up. Keep them in your prayers. Reach out to them. Give them a call. Let them know that you're thinking about them and that you love them. And also that those that are in our church family who's actually lost someone this year, and it's often tough having that first holiday season without that loved one that you've lost that first year. So also keep those family members and our church family in your prayers as well. We ask that you also keep those that are in the hospital and the nursing homes, those are going through bereavement, uh, keep them in your prayers as well. And it's very important. I think we oftentimes forget about the caregivers of those folks that are taking care of those family members and loved ones that are sick. We want to make sure that we continue to keep them uplifted in our prayers as well. Amen. Uh, before and after the services for the next couple weeks, we ask that you stay tuned after the service or maybe log on early because there will be a presentation of the memorials uh, of those that have passed away from the homecoming contribution. So immediately after the service this Sunday, we ask that you don't log off so that you can see that memorial uh, of those homecoming contributions. And for the next couple Sundays, prior to the worship service experience and after the worship service experience, you'll see that presentation as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, we want to also make sure we continue to keep our pastor in your prayers and also keep his family in your prayers as well. These are our announcements, and we ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the book of Isaiah. And I'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. Isaiah chapter 12, 
verses 2 through 6, and I will be reading from the New International Version translation. And it reads as thus, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. May God bless the reading of his word as well as the hearers and doers of his word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's yet again we just come just to, just to pray and just to kneel and bow before you, Lord, just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we say thank you because there are just so many things that, that you've blessed, blessed us with, Lord. And for that, we are grateful, Lord. We want to thank you for just, just protecting us and just watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. And just thank you for allowing us to just wake up with a, a reasonable portion of health and the ability to be in sound mind this morning as we woke up, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for our family and our friends and our loved ones, Lord. Lord, we thank you for those that may have been close to us that, that are passed away, Lord. We just thank you for just blessing us with having a, an opportunity and a moment just to spend that precious time with those loved ones, Lord. Giving us an opportunity just to cherish those memories, Lord. And we ask that you just continue to bless and comfort each one of us that are still dealing with death and the loss of a loved one, Lord. We ask that you just continue to console us and let us know that earth has no burden and sorrow that heaven cannot heal or bear, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for just an opportunity just to vocalize and just to sit in this virtual worship experience this morning, Lord, and just to just cry out and just say, thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord, because the alternative would be that we just wouldn't have that opportunity because we didn't have the opportunity to wake up this morning, but yet you allowed us just to wake up, Lord. Yes, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us in our comings and our goings, Lord. We thank you just for the employment opportunities that you've blessed us with. There's someone, Lord, who was seeking a, a, a new employment opportunity, and you blessed them this past week with that opportunity, Lord. And for that, we want to say thank you, Lord. There are some of us that are looking for better employment opportunities, Lord. We ask that you would make a way for that particular person. Touch the heart of that hiring manager that's looking at that resume. We ask that you would just move to bless that person with that employment opportunity, Lord. When we say thank you, Lord, because we're claiming that blessing, Lord. We ask you to continue to, to bless those in our church family that are sick, Lord. We know that you're in the healing business, Lord. And no matter what diagnosis a doctor has given, the doctor does not have the final say-so, but you do, Lord. And we're asking and claiming healing this morning on somebody's body, Lord. They may seem like everything is bleak, but we know, God, you have the power to touch their body and to heal them, Lord. And we're claiming healing this morning, Lord. Touch them in a mighty way, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless those in our church family who don't have an opportunity to be with their loved ones this holiday season, Lord. Let them know that they're loved and they're cared for, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless our leaders on a municipal level, on a state level, and on a federal level, Lord. Please touch their hearts and minds to have them make good decisions and prudent decisions on behalf of the constituents that they were elected to serve, Lord. We ask that you touch a lot of the chaos that's taking place in our country, a lot of the civil unrest, Lord. We ask that you heal and you touch those systematic injustices that are taking place in our country right now, Lord. Touch those people and move hearts in a mighty way, Lord. 
We ask that you continue to bless us as we continue to celebrate the true reason for this season that we're in, Lord. And that's your son, Jesus. The greatest gift you could have given us, Lord, is Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we ask that you continue to bless us as we go throughout this week, that you protect us, you keep us safe from seen and unseen danger, and you have us to continue to have our lights to shine so that we can show others that you are God, you are Christ, and through that, all things are possible, Lord. We love you, Lord. We're claiming all these blessings that we're asking in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. The word says rejoice and be exceedingly glad about it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning. We don't take that lightly because we know there are many, many, many places that you can stream. Um, we're just so glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I know there are many people that would like to be in the house of the Lord. That they may have been here last week. They may have been here last year. But Lord, we thank you. Thank we you, thank Lord. you, Lord, for thank your you. grace and thank your mercy. You. Yes. Hallelujah. We sing praises to you, Lord. We give praises to you, Lord. Hallelujah.
to our king. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, what a wonderful child. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. New life, new joy, all he brings. Listen to the angels say, holy, holy, holy to the newborn king. Hallelujah. To the newborn 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Silent night, holy night.
Merry Christmas. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I've been blessed by this marvelous ministry of music, both the instrument and the voices. Uh, but that last song that they did, Silent Night, a version of The Temptations from a few years back, is a powerful uh, example of how God works in mysterious ways. God's voice can be heard in both the sacred, yes, but even in the secular. Uh, you can't limit God's voice to what you think is sacred. Amen. Um, one of my favorite movies is The Color Purple and when the people were at Harpo's with their music, heard the people at the church with their music, there was a symbiosis, there was a combining of the two because God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps upon the sea and rides on every storm. In other words, God speaks all languages. Amen. You may not. You may be limited in your understanding, but God uses all mediums. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you, uh, all of you who dedicate your time as volunteers to this effort called the music ministry. And you've been doing it for almost two years, and our hat is tipped to you. And we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we thank God for each of you for tuning in and sharing and, and telling people about the, the message of God through song and word here at Shallow Old Sight. I want to thank the Lord for my dear friend and brother, uh, Minister Curtis Edmonds, Jr., for being our worship leader tonight, today, rather. And we thank God for him and all that he does. And we again uh, say to his lovely bride, uh, Sister Patrice, we bless you and thank God for your unity as husband and wife. And we continue to lift you up. Amen. All right. A couple of business items. Uh, we have our church business meeting on the 29th, which is a Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. It will be both virtual and in person here at the church. That's our church business meeting on December 29th at 6.30. Praise the Lord. I want to urge and encourage you to use your sphere of influence to speak to those people that you know and you have sway with tell them to get vaccinated uh, we're all sick and tired tired and sick sick and tired of being uh, in time out but we could very well be out of it should have been out of it but because people insist on making masks and 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 vaccines a political football and not doing what they need to do and then some people in our community hear about them in the NBA and the NFL, all of a sudden uh, they got more sense than Dr. Fauci, can't even spell science, but use your influence to get these folk to wear their mask, to socially distance, and to get their vaccinations, amen, amen. I wouldn't tell you uh, to do something I have not already done. I've, I've had both shots and a booster, and if another booster comes out, I'm going to get that too, amen. I, I want to be safe. I want to be around. I don't want to join people that I love uh, who have already gone on because there was no vaccine available then. But here's one now, and I want to encourage you to get it. Amen? All right. On today, we will uh, funeralize Brother Rex Harris from the Bennett Funeral Mortuary Funeral Home at the hour of 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be there for Sister Tinka and family as we say our human goodbyes to Brother Rex Harris. We also lift up the family of Brother Buddy Ham, a legend in these parts, a football great, but a man who was also great as it relates to uh, trying to change the, the look of Fredericksburg. 
a man who thought it not a robbery to get out there and put himself on the line to help make Fredericksburg a better place. And we thank him and we thank his family. We're lifting up uh, that entire Ham family in their time of loss. It's their time now, but before the sun sets, it could be our time. But praise the Lord. We thank God that they knew the Lord and they've moved on to a better place. There is a word from the Lord. It comes to us from the physician's gospel. Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. That's Luke's gospel, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18, and it reads like this. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. And every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds ask him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share them with someone who does not. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. And they asked him, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. And as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is coming is more powerful than I and he will baptize you. And I'm not worthy to untie the thong on your sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. I want to share with us for the next little while from the subject, are you ready? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready? Children, are you ready? Are you ready for Christmas? There are only 13 days left before the date arrives when many will celebrate the day of the Savior's birth. Day known as Christmas, Christ's Mass. Christmas is supposed to represent an honoring of the great gift of love that God gave to us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus, as both Savior and King. Yet, in many instances, it becomes more about other things, other things than Jesus as king. It becomes about chestnuts roasting on an open fire, a turkey roasting in an oven, food, family, and a few days off from work, and even a jolly elf in a red suit riding in a sleigh being drawn by reindeer, one of which is named Rudolph, who's said to have a very, very shiny nose. Now, I'm no Ebenezer Scrooge, and I'm not trying to dampen your festivities, but I do believe that if no one else puts Christ back into Christmas, it ought to be those of us who say that we know him, that we've been saved by him, that he's brought us, yes, he's brought us from a mighty long way. 
You see, this season, this Advent season, this is an annual reminder of what the true meaning of Christmas is and what it should be. The true meaning of Christmas is this, that we're getting ready for God's best and greatest gift. His best and greatest gift to humanity in a larger sense, but his greatest gift, his best gift for you and for me. And that gift is Jesus. Jesus, uh, wrapped not just in swaddling clothes, but wrapped in God's love. All because God loves you. Because God loves you. Because God loves you on your worst day. When you don't like your own self, God still loves you. All because God so, 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 so loved you very much. So beyond traditions, beyond what Madison Avenue might say, beyond what Amazon might say, beyond the malls and what they try to tell us about what Christmas means, we ought to know how to prepare for Christmas. And our text tells us, brothers and sisters, that, 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 is, that uh, strange and no unique and a different unconventional preacher, a man by the name of John, was trying to get the people of his day ready, truly ready, really ready for Christmas. See, John hits the nail on the head when he reminded the people that in order to really get ready for Christmas, we must get ready for the Lord. We must get ready for the Lord. Unfortunately, when it comes to getting ready for, for Christmas, even God's people often fall into the trap of thinking first of presents parties, family get-togethers, lights and trees, and jolly old St. Nick. In our text, in our text, John the baptizer goes out to the desert and the people follow him in droves. He preaches words that, that sound harsh on the surface. John says, in effect, you use the name of the Lord with your lips, but your actions or your inactions speak to us louder than your words. Why do people gather in the desert? Why would people leave the comforts of their homes and leave the city and travel into the wilderness to hear John's messages, which are not filled with a whole lot of sweetness and light? Well, I believe his words were filled with words that they knew came from heaven. I believe the people recognize that they have fallen and they have come short of the covenant that God made with Abraham and with each of them. The covenant for them and for us is this. We are charged to love God. We are charged to love God. It is not optional. Love is not optional for the believer. And not only should you love God, but to really show forth that you love God, you, we have to love one another. That covenant for them and for us is this. We are charged to love God, yes, but we must love one another. We must love one another with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We must love our neighbor as ourselves. See, the word of God teaches us in 1 John 4 and 20, how can we love God that we've never seen and then hate our brother or sister that we see daily? It is a spiritual impossibility. The, the devil is a lie. You can't say you love God and, and, and support uh, the Aryan nation. Mm. You can't say you love God and, and, and say you hate this group of people. You can't say that you love God and every time we hear you talk, whether it's in church or in the club, you said, I can't stand so and so. You can't say you love God and hate your brother or your sister that you see Daily. The people recognize that in a very real sense, they have been playing church. Uh, yeah, they've been playing church. They, they go through the gymnastics of church. They go through the acrobatics of church, but they lack a proper relationship with God in the way that the Lord wanted them to have. And it's evident because of the way they treat one another. You can call yourself uh, anything, but Actions speak louder than words. A true-born child of God loves like God as best they can. A true-born child of God tries to walk and talk like God. 
a true-born child of God is about lifting up the name of God and not messing up people's reputations. Right. It's a terrible thing to talk about loving God and hating the folk you see daily. See, the people of John's day talk loud, but their actions and their service and their lip service didn't add up. They talked loud, and as James Brown would say, they were saying nothing. But whatever the reason, the people left their homes. They walked out to the desert and went into the wilderness to be baptized and even hear him preach. And even though his preaching could be severe at times and very challenging, they went anyhow. You are immature. You are a kindergartner in the faith if the only thing you want to hear about is what God can do for you. But every now and then, you need to answer the question, what does God require of me? What does God want from me? It's not a one-way street. You've got to learn to know that in order to say truly with your lips and your hips that you love God, you've got to love even the unlovable. In our text, John opens his mouth, and he begins the sermon in an unusual, unconventional way. He begins the sermon by calling the people slithering, slimy, slick, sinister snakes. It's right there in the text. That John calls the people vipers. And some uh, stepped to John and said, wait one minute. We are the children of Abraham. Why would you call us these names? John said, you may be related to Abraham by blood, but not by the spirit. You may be related to him historically and even genetically, but by the Spirit of God, because of the way you act, you are as far from him as the east is from the west. Otherwise, you wouldn't treat each other the way you do. You see, you can't go around saying you're a child of God and say and do any and everything because your actions speak louder than your words. John said, you may be related to Abraham by blood, yes, but your spirit says otherwise. John says to them and to us that if you say uh, that, 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 that God is your God and, and, and human beings are your brothers and sisters, then you ought to act like it. You ought to act like it. But if you stay on your current path, you will not see the kingdom of God. John preached repentance. Repentance means uh, that, that I turn, I turn. I, in the military, if you were going in one direction, you would put your, your right foot behind your left foot and pivot, and you would then be making an about face, and one minute you're going this way, the next minute you're going in a totally opposite direction. And you have to do an about face once the Lord gets a hold of you. You, you got to stop doing some of the things. You don't stop overnight. I'm not trying to suggest that I'm all of that and a bag of chips, but there ought to be some evidence of God's divine residence in your life as it relates to how you treat one another. Stop c calling the name of God and you're always talking about folk and putting them down. The truth is not in you. That means you're lying. John said, you may have Abraham's blood in you, but you've got the devil's attitude and actions. Don't start saying, I, I know this person or that person, as if their name is somehow going to open doors for you. Translation, according to Dr. Audrey West, a New Testament scholar, she says, don't think, don't think that your ancestry, your ethnicity, your place of origin, your status or any other marker makes you somehow better than other folks even if you're in the church and they're outside of the church. In other words, just because you've name dropped, it does not get you to the front of the line. Just because you name drop uh, doesn't mean you get the hookup. Our ancestors of African lineage said, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. John said, when it comes to the Lord, uh, uh, you can't make it on your grandma's religion. You can't make it on secondhand religion. You've got to know the Lord <laughs> and know him, yeah, for yourself. The Lord says, don't bring that, that worldly quid quo pro stuff. I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine up in my house. This is not a fraternity. This is not a sorority. This is the Lord's house. See, John's message 
indeed was a hard message. It was a harsh message on the surface, and it could, be, it could appear on the surface to be heartless, but far from it. You see, John spoke in love. And, and, and when, you, when you love somebody, it's not always sweetness and light. Sometimes you got to tell it like it is. Sometimes you got to say words that, that you don't want to say, but if you don't say something, things will continue as they are. Sometimes when you speak truth, uh, some folk don't want to hear it. They only want to hear the sweetness and light. But the word of God is sharper than any two-edged soul. And it cuts both coming and going, and it cuts the preacher and the hearer. If the church doesn't live by the Lord's standards of loving one another, then their relationship with God might as well be metaphorically kindling for a bonfire. Uh, these words come from John's lips. It says that you are window dressing your relationship with God. You are indeed prostituting your relationship with God. But a true born child of God understands that I stand for God when I don't stand for anything else. See, so John's message is this. When, when you love someone, you must apply discipline. You see, our parents... And the reason a whole lot of us stayed out of jail is because our parents understood that, that they would chastise us at home so that the cops wouldn't have to chastise us in the streets. I was more afraid of my daddy than I was of some policeman. Uh, they, they even had the audacity, our parents did, you remember, help me somebody. They had the audacity to say things like, this is going to hurt me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, more uh, that it's going to hurt you. Well, why don't you whip yourself then? <laughs> and I'll just go to my room and, and, and I, we'll start all over <laughs> on tomorrow. But I didn't fully understand it then, but I understand it now. See, discipline is not beating. Discipline is not breaking a skin. This discipline is about teaching character. The Bible teaches us that you ought to train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when they get old, they won't depart from it. They will remember those lessons for the rest of the rest of their lives. The Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Writ teaches us if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. John spoke hard words. John spoke what seemed like harsh words, but John spoke in love. John said, in order to avoid God's wrath, you must turn, pivot away from your wicked ways. John said, repent and be baptized. Repent comes from the Greek word metanoia, which literally means to change one's mind, to turn. Repentance is closely tied to forgiveness. Repentance and forgiveness are tied together, yes, one to the other. See, when one truly repents, that repentance can lead to forgiveness. Uh, see, God is waiting for our repentance. And when we offer God true, sincere repentance, God offers us forgiveness. Let me say that for the people in the back. When we really say, I'm sorry, not just, I'm sorry I got caught, <laughs> but when our hearts are really turn and change and we are sorry for our actions. When you look at your mama's eyes and look in your daddy's eyes and you see that your actions hurt them, that hurt ought to translate into repentance, true repentance that will come with forgiveness. You remember? You remember? Brothers and sisters, the people were moved to say to the Lord through John's preaching and teaching that Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. And when you say I'm sorry with your lips and your words generally come from your heart, God is moved to give you and me another chance. Lord, have mercy. You see, it's not that I'm good, but when God sees that I really, 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 really am sorry for my actions, the Lord is moved to give me another chance. 
Uh, that's the only reason I'm here. That's the only reason I'm standing here. And that's the only reason you can listen to what I'm saying. Not because you've been good. Your goodness and my goodness, Paul says, is as a filthy, nasty, vile, repugnant rag. But God's goodness, God's grace that moved a man to sing a song that said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that even saved the wretch like me. Lord have mercy. That, that don't move you. That won't move you. Nothing will. Because I know me like I know me. And you know you like you know you. You were there in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark. Don't get all holy on me today. And the only reason, the only reason, I said, the only reason I'm standing here, and the only reason you're standing or sitting where you are is not because of your goodness, but all because of his amazing grace. In the story, in the story of the prodigal son, one of my favorite stories, Tells the story of a boy who left home. He left home with a black car. He was living high on the hog. And we'll get back to that. He lived so high, he spent his money. But when everything goes out and nothing comes in, eventually you reach the point that Billy Preston talks about. Nothing from nothing. Leave nothing. It leads to the understanding of Newton's third law. What goes up must Come down and down he fell. He fell so low that his Jewish boy, raised as his parents taught him, to never have anything to do with a swine. I'm glad. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, but he reached the place of rock bottom. Don't you ever say what you won't do. The only thing you can say is what you haven't done. Yet. And see, so he fell down so low. Uh, but he fell to a place of seeing himself in the hog pen. And the Bible says that one day he got up, took a look at himself, got up and said, I, I wronged my father in heaven and I wronged my father back at the home place. And he said, I believe I'll go back home. And he goes back home and he goes back home rehearsing within himself. I'm going to say this to dad. Dad, I'm sorry, dad. I made a mistake, dad. Uh, look, look, I'm, I'm not even worthy to have your name. Just give me a job at the house like the servants because they, he's got food to wear and nice clothes, food to eat and clothes to wear. Father saw him. He said what he was thinking in his head rehearsing. Daddy, I've done wrong. Father didn't throw him out, nor did he throw him away. He said, my son, I forgive you. And the boy repented, and they celebrated. The text tells us the tax collectors came. You know, nobody was hated and despised like the tax collector. They were Jews who cooperated with the Roman authorities to collect taxes, and they could collect taxes as high as they wanted to. All they had to do was make sure the Romans got their cut. And the tax collectors were rich in money, but they had been separated from their people because they saw them, as we used to use the word, Uncle Tom's, sellouts. People who, who put their own people down in order to raise themselves up on their backs. They came to Jesus sincerely with repentance, and they said the tax collectors came to Jesus and said, what should we do? And you know what the Lord says? to them, and he says to the tax collectors now, and those who have a tax collector spirit, he says, don't be greedy. When God blesses you, get what you're blessed with, but bless somebody else. Don't be greedy. Don't hoard it up because there was a man who, in the Bible, and I'm going to move on, but who collected his money on top of money, on top of money, stacks on stacks on stacks, and he died. And the question from antiquity of the Bible asked, then who shall those things be? Soldiers came to John and said, what should we do? We want to, to make sure we have eternal life. We don't just want to have medals and promotions in the army. We want to be sure that one day we'll be in the God and the Lord's army. Yeah. Yeah. They asked, what should we do? And Jesus said through John, God said through John, stop abusing your power. Stop hiding behind your badge. Stop acting like you are large and in charge. Stop treating folk the way you wouldn't want to be treated. It's not enough just to say, I'm sorry. Most people are saying, really, I'm sorry I got caught. But true repentance means that you turn 
from your wicked ways. John says, I've been preaching, teaching, reaching, trying to tell people about God's love and offer forgiveness. I've done the best I can, but I want you to know, don't give me all the high fives. Don't give me all the applause. There's somebody coming that's greater than me. How great is it, John? John said, he's so great, I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. Lord, you thought you said that back then, but G John said it even before that. He said, I'm not worthy to tie the straps on his sandal, but, but there's somebody who's coming. I'm baptizing with water, but somebody, and that somebody is Jesus, and he baptizes with spirit and fire. Hallelujah. That, 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 brothers and sisters, is what makes Christmas merry. Because John says there's a present coming. There's something greater coming. There, there is something coming from the courts of glory. God's son who comes to take away the sins of the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The question I asked from the very beginning, are you ready for Christmas? Are you? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for the King? Are you ready for the Savior? Are you ready for his love? Are you ready for repentance? Are you ready for his forgiveness? He said, I bring gifts with me. I'm glad he does not come just with words alone. He comes not with empty hands, but he comes with the greatest gift of all. He comes with the gift of love. I don't know how you feel about it, but I am convinced the absolute greatest thing in my life is not my college education. The absolute greatest thing in my life is not even my wife and my children. The absolute greatest thing in my life is not in the car I drive. The absolute greatest thing in my life is not even the clothes I wear. The absolute greatest thing in my life is not in any earthly possession. But the greatest thing in my life is on that day when I met Jesus for myself. Is there anybody, anybody who knows about this great gift? Is there anybody who knows that without the Lord, I am absolutely nothing? But with the Lord, I can. I hear you, Paul. I hear you, Brother Paul, saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And because he lives and because he's real and because I know that I know that one day he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on a solid foundation. That's why every chance I get, that's why every opportunity that comes my way, I'm going to declare it and say it loud. Can't nobody. I said, can't nobody. Oh, oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Yes, he walks with me. Yes, he talks with me. And because of him, I can have a very, Merry, Merry Christmas. And you can too. The door of the church stands open. The door stands open. Christmas is more than gadgets and things. Christmas is more than fellowshipping with family and friends. That's good. But Christmas is right in the name. Christ Mass, Christ Celebration. At some point, and not even just waiting to December, but every day you ought to have Christmas. Every day you ought to celebrate Jesus. Every day you ought to tell God, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Every day you ought to tell Jesus, thank you for going to Calvary in my place. And, and the best I can do is try to represent you, at least every once in a while. Every now and then, folk ought to be able to accuse you of being a Christian, a follower of the field preacher of Christ, field preacher of Galilee. You ought to be able to have somebody say you re resemble Jesus, if just a little bit. The door of the church stands open. 
there's an email address. And if you email that you are interested in joining this ministry or some other ministry, but there's somebody who will respond to you and let you know that you can have a relationship with Christ. I hear you talking. You're saying, preacher, you don't even know me. You don't know some of the things I've done. I've done some vile, terrible things. And you know what? Everybody under the sound of my voice, including me, especially me, can say, me too. Me too. But he's in the business of not throwing your past at you, but giving you a brand new start. You can start over right now. You're not too dirty. You're not too nasty. You're not too vile and pregnant to come to the Lord truly, offer repentance, and I declare every time he'll offer forgiveness. If your repentance is true, his forgiveness is true. We've done as the Lord is asking. Still, there's room at the cross for you and you and, yes, even you. If you want to have a Merry Christmas, lift up the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah for the one who saved your soul. Let us now receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. And together we declare, amen.